Hello and welcome back. This is going to be episode 3 of our Zero to Hero series in the Mirage 2000. Today we're going to be going over Comet Hudson Biology, Autopilot, and Navigation. Uh, this video is pretty lengthy. I'm going to include timestamps that way you can navigate through YouTube a little bit easier. Before we get started, I'd like to say a special thanks to Razman Helljumper. Uh, he helped me along with some points in this video. So let's get into it. Enjoy. This portion of the video, we're going to be going over Common Hustle Biology. Uh, right now it's paused. Uh, I'll unpause it when we get to certain parts. So let's get into it. The top left is our calibrated airspeed. The top number is our airspeed in knots, and the bottom number is our airspeed in Mach. Right here is our heading scale or heading tape. If you notice, there's a triangle and then there's a straight line. The triangle is representing uh, your aircraft's bearing or direction it's flying in, and the line is representing the aircraft's heading or the direction that the nose is pointed in. If you notice when you fly, they get separated, that's because the nose is pointing more lead than the bearing until it levels out. If you're flying and it's, uh, like, if you're flying level and the, they're separated, you probably have a pretty good crosswind. Alright. Top right is our plane's altitude. The top number is our barometric uh, altitude and the bottom number is our radar altimeter. So right now the asterisks are representing that we're over 5,000 feet uh, with our radar altimeter. But since we're about to be going over mountains, uh, the number's going to be changing. Right about now. Yep. Alright. Here we have our flight path marker or as other planes might say or call it, is your uh, velocity vector indicator. All this is your aircraft's instantaneous flight path. Then right here, we have our acceleration chevrons. All this is representing is your plane's attitude and longitudinal uh, airspeed. So right now that they're pretty level with our flight path marker, that means we're not either gaining or losing speed. But if they go above the flight path marker, that means we're gonna be starting to gain speed. If they go below the flight path marker, that means we're gonna start uh, decelerating. All right, let's go to the pitch ladder. The Mirage has increments of five on the pitch ladder. So once you start pulling up, uh, your pitch ladder will be in solid uh, bars. If you drop the nose, it's gonna be in, in dashed lines. All right, the solid line going across is our artificial horizon. This symbology right here is your waypoint heading. If it's pointing up, that means the waypoint is in front of you. If it's pointing down, the waypoint is behind you. Right here is the distance to the waypoint, so 26 nautical miles, and it's waypoint 1. Alright, that covers the common HUD symbology. Next, we'll be going over autopilot. See you there. This portion of the video is going to go over autopilot. Before we start, let's go over the controls we'll be using. We're going to do trim down, trim up, trim left, trim right. Autopilot disconnect. Uh, this does exactly what it sounds like. It disconnects your autopilot from your stick. That way you have full maneuverability of your stick. The next three, if you don't have room to bind it, that's completely fine. You could turn them on and off inside the cockpit. So autopilot turns your autopilot on, turns your autopilot off. Altitude hold mode. So whatever altitude we're at, we toggle this, our plane will stay at that altitude. Then approach hold mode. This is for your iOS landings. Again, if you don't have those three binded, or enough room for those three, you'll be fine. You can do it inside the cockpit. Alright, so we talked about controls. Now I said you go into the autopilot uh, control panel. So pause track IR right here. Alright, so right here is your autopilot panel. So you have your test light down here. This is your autopilot master button. So it turns your autopilot on and off. This is your altitude hold button. So whatever altitude you're currently at, so say 9,000 feet, if you turn that on with autopilot, our plane will stay at 9,000 feet. This is your display altitude hold, which is toggled by these drums right here. Honestly, I don't use this at all, so I'm not going to talk about it. Right here is a blank space, and then right here is your approach hold mode. So if you're doing your iOS landing, this is how you will turn that on. So let's go over colors real quick. Pausing the game. So if you have anything turned on, it's going to be indicated by a green light. If it's on standby, it's going to be indicated by an amber light. Then obviously nothing's turned on. It won't be illuminated at all. Illuminated at all. Alright, so we talked about that. Now let's actually go into demonstrating autopilot. Alright, so let's turn our autopilot on. Alright, now we have an asterisk on the HUD. Uh, this asterisk is also indicating to you that your autopilot is turned on. I like to think of this asterisk as its own flight path marker. And what I mean by that, so with the trim controls, just using trim, I'm going to be telling my plane where to go. Go up, go down, go left, go right. So all that's controlled by uh, trim. I'm not actually touching my stick, it's all just trim. 
Alright, so let's talk about some Hudson Balls you also with uh, Autopilot. Alright, pause track IR. Alright, so I said the asterisk means your Autopilot is turned on as well. Alright, so we talked about this in the common uh, Hudson Ballsy. So the line is indicated when your nose is going, and then the bearing your plane is currently at, and then right here, this uh, the Chevron is indicating your autopilot uh, heading. So right now we're a little bit left, and our plane is going to meet, uh, meet that Chevron. Eee. Got stuck when I paused it. Alright, so. Let's go over a situation. So say something is over here and you want to go check it out, but instead of getting out of autopilot, you just hold right on your trim until this rolls off the heading tape and then count underneath it. Let's go to 150. 160 works as well. All right, so now we're heading 160. Also on your IDN or your HSI, indicated by the green arrow bug. Again, I'm not touching an autopilot or the stick. This is autopilot doing its own thing. Alright, now we're at 160. Um, yeah, the autopilot is a pretty cool function to Mirage. Um, you can actually land your plane doing this. Um, go for it. I, I do it sometimes just for just for fun. Alright, so let's talk about some limitations while in autopilot. So for whatever reason, if you want to go plus or minus 40 degrees on your pitch ladder, so say you want to go up 40 degrees, I'm not going to go all the way that way. When you hit 40 degrees, you're still not going to go uh, past that. That's like its final limit. Um, I don't know why you would, but that's, like I said, it's final limit. Let's try an autopilot hold on. Alright, so, for whatever reason, say, you don't want to turn off your autopilot, but, like, you want to go left, and say you forget to do that, you notice that I am moving the stick, but nothing's really happening. So, what happens is, once you get more than a half pull in any direction, then your autopilot would uh, dis uh, disconnect and go into standby mode. So, right there. What you notice is kind of a kind of a weird zone. So right there. So more than a half pull. So if you want to do that for whatever reason, say you're an autopilot and something's behind you, and you pull back. It's a little bit laggy because the autopilot's engaged. So the autopilot disconnect. So say someone's behind you, you disconnect your autopilot. It turns it off, right? So I'll pile it on and then disconnect. Now I have full movement on my stick without any of the uh, lag uh, with the autopilot. Pretty cool fun, uh, feature to have uh, binded. Alright, so now let's talk about the holds. So if you're within a 10 degree roll, you will go into a bearing hold. So let's go like 10 degrees, 160. And then I want to trim to keep 160. Alright, so a bearing hold, it pretty much works when autopilot's engaged in under a 10 degree bank. Now if you want to go into a roll hold, say we orbit this town right here, go more than a 10 degree hold, uh, bank, sorry, but less than 60 degrees, now we're in a bearing hold. So now we're going to be orbiting. That's pretty much covering autopilot for this video. Next portion will be going over navigation, so see you there. Alright, this portion is going to be the navigation. Uh, this might be a little bit lengthy. I'm going to include some timestamps at the bottom. That way you can uh, scroll and look for what you want to uh, look for. Alright, some topics we're going to be covering is topic one, how to select waypoints. Topic two, how to use the IDN, uh, which is your HSI. Topic three, radio navigation. Topic four, using the INS. Topic five, uh, creating your own waypoints within the INS. And then we're just going to, at the end, we're going to fly the waypoints we made. Alright, so let's get into it. Um, so it's a fair warning, we are in auto pause. So the plane isn't actually flying, but we can click everything in the cockpit. Alright, so let's get into it. Topic 1, how to select your waypoints. So, on the HUD, you notice we have waypoint 1 selected. Uh, there's only two waypoints right now pre-made. So we're going to select within two waypoints. So waypoint 1 is selected right here to plus or minus. This toggles between your waypoints. So your next waypoint, waypoint 2. Previous waypoint, waypoint 1. That's one uh, method of doing it. The other method inside the cockpit will be destination zero two, right there. Destination zero one. 
right there. And as you can see, it changes as well. So, different waypoint, different waypoint. All right, how I do it, it says I have room on my hotels for it. Next waypoint and previous waypoint. If you don't have room for this, that's fine. I just have it set this way because it's on my thumb and I don't have to remo remove my hand from the stick. Alright, so that covers topic one, which is selecting waypoints. Let's go over topic two now, which is your IDN or your HSI, which is down here. Pause track IR. Alright, so that's going to do it. Up top, right here, is our uh, heading. Let me zoom in a little bit more for you guys, maybe. Alright, so we got our heading indicator right here, this green, uh, gray bar, or gray triangle, sorry. Not this uh, green one. This is for autopilot. Alright, and then we have our compass rows right here pretty much our compass azimuth. And then we have our large needle with the two lines. Uh, this is going to be pointing to if we have a waypoint selected, uh, tack hand selected. Uh, pretty much if we have any destination selected, this will point to it. The thin needle right here, this is uh, a direction of a vor beacon or a TAF command bearing. Uh, we'll get more into this in a little bit. And then right here we have uh, two flags highlighted right now. There will be a third one. It was an issue. Uh, so the first one is a the thin needle, so right now it's either having a malfunction or it's just not getting a bearing. But right now it's just not going to get a bearing. Then right here we have a heading uh, flag, so we have a heading issue. We'll double check that with the uh, emergency compass. And if there's one right here, there'll be uh, an issue with a large uh, needle. Again, that'll either be uh, it's not getting a heading or it's not working. So let's check our emergency compass. We're a little bit left of the three. So our heading's good. All right, now let's get the settings. All right, so we have navigation mode. Uh, pretty much the mode you're going to be in at all times. We go through waypoints, so like waypoint one, two, three, four, whatever. And we have our initial heading, our inertial heading. And you notice there's not really that much of a difference. Uh, honestly, I don't use this, so I can't really talk too much about it. Then we have attack and heading. So wherever attack and begins at, this will point towards it now. An offset heading, so say you have a tack in out there, but you want to be close to it, you get it set up, set up your offset from that. Um, honestly, I don't see the point in doing that. If I'm trying to go somewhere, I don't want to go close to it. I want to go to it. And then here, uh, this will be the range for the offset, and then the bearing for the offset. All right, that covers the HSI portion. Check our, all right, so now topic three is going to be radio navigation. Just down here in the Mirage, pause and check IR. All right, so here we have our VOR and ILS, and then we have our TACAN. All right, so TACAN can be used to navigate to, uh, between air bases, naval ships, and refueling tankers and DCS. Uh, again, just note some airfields or some ships, for example, don't have a TACAN, so you won't be able to navigate to them if they don't have one. Then we got VOR and ILS. Uh, so this provides a direction and distance to an ILS or VOR uh, beacon. So ILS uh, stands for Instrument Landing uh, System. Pretty much this means this is going to guide you to the runway. And then VOR stands for Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Range. That's a mouthful. So how to dumb it down is this is a navigation aid for planes that don't have GPS. Uh, the Mirage doesn't have, not have a GPS, so we use INS uh, grid coordinates. All right, let's actually toggle uh, or talk through how to use this. So for the iOS and board, if this is on A, that means it's off. N means it's on. This is going to be toggle in the middle. Then for tech N, we have our X-ray channels and our key channels. Here's our power uh, knob. So off obviously means it's off. Receive means that we are receiving the, uh, their beacon. So say Katasi's out there, we'll be receiving them. Transmit receive means that the plane and uh, the tack and beacon are communicating to each other. The plane will start beeping at that point. So the plane, when it beeps, it means the tack and the plane are communicating. And we got air to air, so air to air refueling. Uh, so when you want to look for a tanker, you'll go to air to air mode. All right, so let's actually go over some stuff. Katasi, for example. All right, so if you go on F10 and you ever see an airfield with this symbol right here, this means that that is a TACAN. A lot of airfields uh, kind of don't have that now, so 
let's say over here now check does not have attack in all right and then this hexagon symbol right here is indicating a vor beacon uh, there's not too many of them again it's kind of an old system and then the circle right here with the dots is an ILS beacon so Sanaki so right here has uh, two of them to lead you in so you can actually receive their beacon pretty far out compared to this one which is a little bit of a weaker strength alright so now let's go Katasi alright so 44 x-ray for the TACAN and then 10975 so 44 x-ray 10975 alright so now let's go TACAN all right, so now we actually have our TAC and navigation that's pointing directly to Katasi's, uh, Katasi's TAC and. All right, so now let's go into Katasi's VOR since it has one. The VOR is 11360. So you notice it's pointing out to the side right now. 11360. Let's put this in navigation so you can actually see. So now the uh, beacon is received, or the VOR is receiving the VOR beacon. Uh, I believe this has a range of 200 nautical miles. So let's double check because I know one more airfield. There we go. Krasendor has a VOR of 115 AD. So, yep, now it's pointing out to Romania. So yeah, it's out of range. All right, let's go back to iOS of 10975. I believe it's 10975, right? One oh nine seven five. yep, sweet. Alright, so yeah, that covers uh, radio navigation. Let's go back to the script real quick so we know where we are. Alright, so now top four is going to be the INS panel, which is down here. Pause track IR, go to INS. Alright, so INS is going to be the heart of the Mirage navigation. Uh, it can store up to 20 waypoints, and additional, it can store up to, uh, so it can store 20 waypoints, and each waypoint can have a bad, which is the offset. Then you can make three mark points as well. Uh, honestly, I really don't do this. Uh, if you want to get into, like, doing offsets and mark points, I'll link the manual in the uh, description if you want to do a deep dive on that. Alright, and then here we have our settings as well. So let's talk about them. Uh, oh, by the way, this is the English cockpit. The French cockpit is a little bit different. For example, English is waypoint. Uh, the French cockpit says butt. <laughs> and then it will also say bad. Uh, so butt and bad. So butt means waypoint in French and bad means offset. Alright, so up top, we would have RDTP, or TD, sorry. Uh, this would be route desire and then uh, attempts desire, so pretty much a route plan and then say waypoint one. You want to get there in five minutes, and that's how you will set that up. LG, so waypoint uh, latitude and longitude. Altitude, so waypoints altitude. Uh, RHDS, we've done this before in the, uh, the landing video. And this is going to be runaway heading and fly slope. This is how you set up your ILS landing. DT, DTM is your distance bearing uh, to the next waypoint. And then we got TRVS is just remaining time and ground speed. And then over here we have our offsets. Alright, so offset uh, to the waypoint, longitude and latitude, the offset altitude, uh, offset navigation vector, and then we have the magnetic uh, declination, and then we have uh, wind bearing and speed. So, honestly, I'm probably going to just use these three the most. Every now and then I'll use RD, uh, TD. Alright, so, that pretty much covers the INS. So, see where we are in the script real quick. INS is covered, now let's go into creating our own waypoints. So, to create our own waypoints, let me move the papers out of the way. So, let's go... The reason why you want to make your own waypoint, say... These two are, so waypoint one, waypoint two. Uh, say you want to go check out Katasi, you'll do a waypoint off of that and say, another example, you got a message to go, hey, check out 
this air field right here uh, for any kind of activity. So you just have a different waypoint to navigate to it more accurately other than just going on F10 and going, yep, it's right about there. All right, so let's actually add those waypoints. So let's add this X runway since it's a pretty identifi identifiable land feature. Uh, let me get my pen real quick. All right, so how I'm going to get these uh, grids compared to most runways, which will tell you the grid right here. I'm going to zoom in on the runway. I'm going to get right here in the metal. Top left up here is going to be the coordinates. So I'm going to go in the middle. All right, I'm going to write down. Where is it at? All right, so X runway, so I'm going to call it. It's going to be north forty one five zero three one. Easting is going to be four one. Uh, I'm going to actually write zero four one because when you enter easting in the INS, it has to be zero first. So zero four one four seven five two, altitude of thirty three feet. Again, I got all that from right here. All right, so then let's actually land at Katasi. All right, so right here it gives you all the information that you need. So I'm running down to toss you real quick. All right, so bearings gonna be north, uh, 42, 10, 44. Easting is gonna be 0, 42, 2, 9, 4, 4, from to 147 feet. Uh, since it's we're gonna land here anyway, so it's good information. So we got tack hand of 44 X-ray, which is it's already implemented because that's the example we use for the radio navigation. Uh, let's go and land at runway 7. Let's get the heading out for runway 7 real quick. Seven three seven four. Okay, let's go with 7, 4. So it's 0, 7, 4 degrees for that. All right, so now we're going to make two new waypoints into our flight plan. So it's going to go 3, 1, 2, 4. All right, so now we're going to go to INS. Pause check IR. All right, so now we're going to prep 0, 3, north. I'm sorry. North. All right, let me write this down. 4, 1, 5, 0, 3, 1. Right there. At Easting, zero four one four seven five two. Enter. Altitude right here is the feet. Zero zero zero. Enter. Zero 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 three three. Enter. Double check to make sure everything's saved. All right. So waypoint three is now saved. Prep four. All right, so north, uh, right here, 42, 10, 4, 4. All right, Easting, east, 0, 4, 2, 2, 9, 4, 4. Enter. Did it save? Yes, okay. Altitude is 147 feet, so 0, 0, 1, 4, 7. Enter. Then I said I'm going to land there, so... Uh, going slope is 0, 7, 4, so 0, 0, 7, 4, nope, 0, 7, 4, 0, enter, uh, glide slope will be standard 0, 3 degrees, or 0, 3, 0, 0, okay, cool, double check all that saved, altitude, longitude, alright, so now we have two additional waypoints from what we had, All right, let's see, is there anything else I need to cover real quick? Looking through my notes. All right, yeah, cool. So let's execute now. So unpause. Back to pause off. So now we're going to go to waypoint three. All right, so let's actually do something cool as well. So. All right, so this is kind of cool. Um, it's not really uh, used. Even the real pilots don't use this, but we could set up so it's 13 miles out. We could set up a time I want to be at that waypoint. The way you'll do it 
Oh, I actually paused it. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna go zero three. Zero three. All right, so it's 13 nautical miles out. Let's do a quick conversion real quick. So we're gonna go 500 knots. That'll be 500 nautical miles in an hour. We're gonna go uh, 500 knots. That'll be 8.3 nautical miles in one minute. So we're at 13. I want to be there in about a minute and 20 seconds. So let's enter that. So one or zero zero one two zero. So one minute and 20 seconds. Validate. All right. So now let's fly. Enter top. All right. So we got some symbology up here. These little brackets right here is now the time. So I have 120, and by the time I enter that, that's going to be the countdown from 120. So I'm going to keep the velocity uh, chevrons in these brackets to get theirs uh, within the time limit. Then I'm also going to hit RD for route desire. Break this up a little bit. So now we got more HUD symbology. This bracket right here, you're going to put the flight path marker within this bracket, and it's going to be moving around. And then right here on the map, or sorry, the radar, this plus right here is going to be indicating a waypoint uh, that you have selected. So if I have like waypoint uh, four Katasi, we're 20 miles out, we won't even see it, but it will be on the radar display way out there. And then right here is our route desired. The plane is pretty much going to guide us to the point where we can actually fly through this. So that's what route desire is. Um, honestly, how I fly through waypoints, I don't even use this stuff. I just fly off the H. HDI and then the waypoint heading on the HUD. All right, so let's unpause. I'm just gonna do this for a little bit. All right, so top went away. I think it's because we're at such an angle that we're facing away from the waypoint. Again, the real pilots really don't use that. I was just showing you how you can uh, implement that. So now we're 9.5 nautical miles out from waypoint. Uh, three, which is going to be our waypoint one, technically. So now it's turning pretty shortly. Yep, right there is X right away. Sweet. All right. So that crosshair right there, that's indicating uh, your waypoint. Um, if you actually did this in Mission Editor, and it was a mission that had uh, actual waypoints set up, so say I set this up actually right in the middle, the waypoint will be directly in the middle. All right. So let's keep going. Keep flying the route. See how it's going to get? Yep. Right there. Perfectly through it. Then we're going to go to waypoint one, which is right there. Let's get out of this real quick. All right, so right there's our heading, uh, or waypoint heading. It's gonna be pointing down below us and let us know that we just passed it, just like it did. All right, now let's go to waypoint one. Get out of this mode. So on Mission Editor, I placed it directly on that runway, and that's where it is. Waypoint two here in a second. And left. And we go waypoint two. Let's go to RD. So now we're gonna have us try to fly through that. Actually, it was not use RD. Uh, just because we're going to bring it back around and go to Katasi anyways. Alright, so RD is waypoint 2, or sorry, waypoint 2 is that far out. Uh, no, I'm not even going to set time up. Uh, let's fast forward though. No way, I'm not wasting all you guys' this time. There it is within 10 nautical miles, so it popped up. Right, let's start doing uh, tacking navigation to Katasi. Right about there. 
All right, so there's waypoint two. Now let's go to actual waypoint. Akatasi. That must be uh, kind of courteous. I was actually talking to him. I actually have to do that. All right, so attacking navigation says it is off to our left, 17 degrees. I'm going to go a little bit further. That way we can turn it into the ILS beacon. Yep, right there. Pretty much going to wait till this is 90 degrees left to turn in. Too high. All right, turn him in. All right, now let's start setting up our IOS approach. So, just like before, we have to put the flight path marker. Now we gotta chase that box, put the path marker in the box. And there's our Iowa's uh, lineup. Here we can go autopilot, let the plane do its thing. I'm just gonna control the chevrons. Oh! <laughs> Let's not do that. Some of my great points. Pause. We'll see great coordinates for Katasi. 421044. Yep, 042. Uh, 2944. Oh, wait, yep, right there. 44. Probably this. Zero, three, zero, enter. There we go. Kutasi, in field one, one, request landing. Oh, that's what happened. I went into a different uh, HUD mode. And a gear down. All right, if you guys watched the landing video, uh, I'm gonna, I let the plane land itself in autopilot, so this time I'm actually gonna take control. About 120 feet out. Again, all I'm doing, I'm just putting the chevrons into the brackets, plane is flying itself. That M is meaning that we just went over a marker. All right, plane's mine. A little bit of a flare. It goes down. Drag shoot out. Alright guys, so that covered the navigation portion. Uh, might have been a little bit long, sorry about that. Again, I'll put the timestamps. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Next week we'll be going over the radar. Have a good one.